Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Good evening, everyone. This is the City of Romulus City Council regular meeting for Monday, October 9th, 2017. And uh, we will have roll call vote now. Councilwoman Abdo? Here. Councilman Barden? Here. Councilwoman Choate? Here. Councilman Kraut? Here. Councilwoman Mikowski? Here. Councilwoman Roscoe? Here. And Councilman Wadsworth is excused. excused. Thank you. We do have a quorum this evening for the meeting. Thank you. The agenda is as follows. Number one, agenda. Number two, uh, minutes. Number three, petitioner. Number four, chairperson's report. Number five, mayor's report. Number six is the clerk's report. Uh, 6B is the treasurer's report. Seven is public comment. Eight is unfinished business. Nine is new business. Ten is communication. Eleven is warrant 17-19. And 12 is adjournment. A motion would be in order to accept the agenda. So moved. Support. The motion by Mr. Kraut, supported by Ms. Mikowski for approval of the agenda as presented. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. She have votes yes, the agenda approved. 2A minutes, the approval of the minutes from the regular council meeting held October 2nd, 2017. Move for the minutes of the regular meeting October 2nd, 2017. Support. The motion by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Abdo, for approval of the minutes from the regular council meeting, which was held October 2nd, 2017. Mr. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Ab abstain. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. 3A is petitioner, and we have a petitioner this evening, Ms. Sonda Stepchuk. She is a Romulus resident, and she's here to present a proposal to City Council. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor Burkroff. Good evening. Council members. It's good to see you all. It's been a while since I've been up here. <laughs> I want to preface what I have to say tonight with the following statement. I understand that any person can run for the seat of city council. Any person, related or not. All right? And this is what I came to you for. <coughs> to suggest a proposal for equal voting power. Tonight I come to you with a matter of utmost importance. I'm going to read what I have to say, if you don't mind. I come to you with a matter of utmost importance and concerns to the entire city of Romulus. The Romulus City Council was established some years ago for a definite and distinct purpose, that of voting on various issues presented to them by the public. There are seven individual seats on which council, city council members may serve if elected. Each Romulus city council seat is allotted equal voting power on any given issue before them. However, this equal voting power rendered to the Romulus city council seats is in danger of being eradicated, totally destroyed in the upcoming November 7, 2017 election if relatives vying for the city council seats win in this election. Any good intentions of related candidates serving would be drastically overridden by irreparable harm, by the irreparable harm that this would cause simply by serving on the same Romulus City Council at the same time. Should relatives serve on the same Romulus City Council at the same time, this would immediately render an inordinate amount of voting power and control to the seats occupied by relatives and instantly eradicate equal voting power allotted to all seven city council seats, undermining the very purpose for which the Romulus City Council was originally established. 
the scales of justice would automatically be tipped and thrown completely off balance and the Romulus City Council would be rendered virtually useless in having a sound decision-making process on issues brought before them. Furthermore, should relatives serve on the same Romulus City Council at the same time, this would instantly install an ever-present conflict of interest at each and every Romulus City Council meeting until this situation changed. Should relatives serve on the same Romulus City Council at the same time, this could invite undue bias and voting influence, a possible voting monopoly on future Romulus City Councils, bribery and graft, collusion, unnecessary chaos and confusion, complete futility of management, etc. I could go on. With a position of serving as a Romulus City Council member comes a responsibility to uphold and defend the integrity of the city council seats at all times to make decisions based on honesty, wisdom, and sound judgment that will benefit all concerned. This integrity begins with maintaining, protecting, and preserving the allotted equal voting power given to each of the seven Romulus City Council seats. Wherefore, I am respectfully requesting that an equal voting power ordinance be created for the Romulus City Council, council which would uphold maintain, protect, and preserve the equal voting power allotted to each of the seven Romulus City Council seats. This equal voting power ordinance would not allow relatives to serve on the same Romulus City Council at the same time for the continual well-being of the city of Romulus. Or perhaps the city of Romulus lawyer could draw up a proposal for a new law to be established to protect the Romulus City Council seats. Maybe the city of Romulus charter has to be changed. Whatever it takes, let the city of Romulus do it. This dangerous situation I bring to you is preventable and unnecessary. There is one definite way to avoid this harmful problem of relatives serving on the same Romulus City Council at the same time. It involves a matter of conscience. Do the honorable thing and uphold the integrity of these council seats simply by declining to serve on the same Romulus City Council at the same time. This would benefit the entire city of Romulus in an unexpected way and set a precedent for sound judgment that should be practiced by all city councils everywhere. You will not regret making the right decision. The decision is up to you. Think about it. Please don't wait until it's too late. Election is on November 7th, 2017. Please resolve this issue before November 7th. I am respectfully requesting that the Romulus City Council vote on this issue tonight as time is of the essence. Thank you all for your time and consideration regarding this matter. I appreciate it. It's so important and I want to say one more thing. There is a great opportunity presented here by resolving this issue wisely and honestly for the city of Romulus, a city of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Can we vote on this tonight? Um, attorney, would you please uh, that? To, that kind of action would take a charter amendment to prohibit relatives of, of a certain degree to run at the same time that someone else, and the, the same degree of relatives, someone else was also running. You couldn't do that by an ordinance. Um, and of course, the, any charter member would have to go to the citizens for a vote. So the most that you could do, if you chose to go down that path, would be to propose language for a charter amendment to put before the citizens at a later date that obviously could not be done between now and the, the November election. The next election time is May of 2018. May I say something here? Sure. Mr. Crouch? Yes. And all city council members, consider not having relatives. This is a personal decision. Not having relatives sit, serve on the same city council at the same time. If you can't be made a legal judgment, then make it a personal one, an honorable one, and a righteous one. This is an opportunity to show cities around us, 
the state of Michigan, that Romulus is an honest and an upright community. What better way to show it? Sometimes we think the best way to serve is to sit on a council seat. Sometimes it's better not to. In this case, it would be better not to. In any case, in the same way, not because of the people, but because of what it does to the seat. These seats are established with a certain power given to them. And that power must not be undermined by any action whatsoever. It has to be maintained or the purpose for the city council is useless. You don't want to do this to, the, to your city council. You do not do our city council. I've been living in Romulus for 48 years. I don't want this city to collapse because of bad judgment or a lack of good judgment. But I know this, I stand before you and I bring this to you. There is something you can do to prevent it. Just simply refuse to let the people concerned refuse to serve at the same time on the city council. That would eradicate the problem until, if you have to, if, if we can write, a, have an ordinance written up to prevent this for the protection of the city, for the good of all. There's different ways, like I say, do something. Sometimes you think, it's not always, ask and think about what you're doing. It's not just the individual, it's the whole council is affecting, the whole city of Romulus. And Romulus has an opportunity to do something good here and to set another kind of precedent, like I say, for honesty, for decency, and allowing the, the relatives more power in those seats undermines it completely. Think about it. I have copies of what I read to you tonight I would like you all to have, so you can have think about this in the days to come and hopefully eradicate this problem before November 7th. And if someone could pass them out for me, my breath is a little short sometimes. I made 10 copies here, I know, even though there's seven. You, Mayor, and others, too, that, you know, that aren't there, you over there, and, you know, okay? And please think about it. There's no malice in this at all. There's no accusations of anything, doing any wrongdoing. But sometimes problem, unforeseen problems present themselves, and I think an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, don't you? I hate trying to rectify situations all the time when you, something could have been done simply by somebody mentioning it to you and letting people think about it. And I'll tell you something, they wouldn't regret doing it. It can only bring, resolving this matter can only bring on, in an honorable way, can only bring, I don't know, blessings to Romulus, you know? Okay, thank you thank so you. much. Number four is the chairperson's report. Thank you, Madam uh, Deputy Clerk. Uh, the chair doesn't have a report tonight. Then I'll ex ask to accept your report as given. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Mikowski to accept the chairperson's report. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Choke? Yes. Mrs. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you. <coughs> Number five is the mayor's report. Good evening, city council, deputy clerk, and audience. Uh, tonight I brought a quote uh, by Warren Bennis. It goes as this, uh, leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. And I picked that one because this last week, uh, Tuesday, uh, we uh, had a groundbreaking. Uh, Penske facility, excited about. Thanks everybody that came out to that. Um, I wanted to, Tim, I just brought this rendering. You know, and the reason I bring it up is one, to, to thank Tim and his, his uh, economic team for their efforts, but also all the people that were involved to make it possible. This was an effort with the MEDC, uh, this was an effort with Aerotropolis, this is an, uh, an effort with uh, Tim and our team working together to bring 400 new jobs here. So I'm going to put Tim on the spot. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Tim, if you don't mind, he didn't know I was going to do that, but he always likes to. 
It's uh, actually one of many new projects that are coming to town that are pretty significant. Uh, this Penske project is 600,000 square feet. It is going to be a refrigeration freezer facility that is going to service all the Kroger stores in the Southeast Michigan area. Uh, with it, it brings 443 new jobs. And uh, actually, it continues the interest uh, from an industrial distribution standpoint that has occurred in Romulus over the last uh, six to eight months. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Sure. And I just wanted to highlight that because many of the electeds were there, but as, as I traveled my weekend, uh, so many people said they didn't hear about it, didn't know about it, and uh, we do need to celebrate those victories when we have them, so that was good work. Um, we do have a video to run, Roger, so if we could put that on just to update on some of our community events, please. Hello, here's what's coming up around Romulus. Toddler Storytime is at the library every Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. Their Family Storytime is back every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Scarecrows are now on display in downtown Romulus. Please take a look at our Facebook page to vote for your favorites all month. The Romulus Senior Center is hosting their annual health fair open to all ages tomorrow, October the 10th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Beginning October the 11th, Romulus Community Schools will be hosting six town hall meetings for anyone with questions regarding their up-and-coming items on the ballot in November. Dates and times are listed on your screen or can be found at Romulus.net. Also, for more information about your Romulus Community Schools, tune in to the October edition of the Mayor's Corner on cable and the City YouTube channel. We are having new recreation programs to register for, including adult kickball, peewee basketball, and the daddy-daughter dance. Find out more at romulusgov.com slash recreation. The Romulus High School Varsity Eagle football team has their homecoming game against Dearborn this Friday, October the 13th at 7 p.m. On October the 14th, there are many events going on around the community. From 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. will be Wayne County's last household hazardous waste drop-off day at the Wayne County Community College Downriver Campus in Taylor. At 10 a.m., the City Ordinance and Animal Control Departments will be hosting a Halloween pet contest, pet costume contest and fun day at the Historical Park. All licensed and leashed dogs and cats are welcome. Registration is $5. All proceeds will benefit the animal shelter. A new chess club will be held at the library at noon. The Blue Sky Trunk or Treat will begin at 4 p.m. with special games and activities. Trunks will be open for treats at 6.30 p.m. And the Civic League is hosting a Meet the Candidates night at 5 p.m. The public is invited to meet all the candidates running for city offices and ask questions. Stay tuned for more details on this and any of our other events by visiting our website, RomulusGov.com, or like the City of Romulus page on Facebook. Thanks and have a great week, everyone. Um, next, what I'd like to, Mr. Chairman, is bring up uh, Jasmine Dancy to talk about the Fall Fest. Okay. Jasmine? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so I just wanted to give a little recap, and while I'm talking, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a slideshow over here on the screen for those of us here in the audience. Um, so we did hold our third annual Fall Festival this past Friday, and um, it was so much of a success than what we were expecting. You know, the rain, there was a little threat of rain. We weren't really quite sure. Uh, we were almost going to reschedule it, and everything just ended up so wonderful. And we're estimating we had over 500 people in attendance and so many smiles. And uh, I just wanted to give a quick thank you to some of the, our partners and sponsors for that event. So a uh, big thank you to the Historical Society who did the trick-or-treating at their historical locations and provided some uh, informational material for those in attendance. Uh, of course, our uh, Public Works Department that put in a ton of time and effort there. Uh, our DDA, they helped co-sponsor a couple of the uh, 
features at the festival. Our Citizens Academy Alumni Association was a huge help for again this year, helping with crowd control and just directing uh, the visitors. And of course, our Recreation Commission and Community Services staff. So thank you to all those. Um, just a little overview of the, of the event for those that weren't in attendance. We had uh, food vendors that you uh, were might be familiar with from our farmer's market. They did a great job. We had face painting. Um, uh, this year new we had a petting zoo area and of course the ever popular hay rides which seems to be the main attraction of the event so uh, I just thank everyone that did come out or um, help participate and uh, I think it was just a, another great successful community event and to tell a little bit more from their perspective um, I want to bring up Jill Cavell and her friends from the Boys and Girls Club who were in attendance uh, again this year so folks want to come on up Thank you, Jess. City Council Mayor Burke Burkhoff, thank you for having us. Reason they're here so as if I make a mistake, I can blame it on them. So, um, I'm Jill. I'm the club director for the Boys and Girls Club located in Wick Elementary School. Um, this is, I don't know how many we've been at, three, four. The first hay ride almost fell off because the hay kind of gave way, but it was fun. So, um, <laughs> second one, I was sitting next to Braylon and he almost knocked me off, but he'll tell you about that in a minute. So. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. We do have a little gift for um, the council and, and mayor for inviting us and, and always keeping us in, you know, everything you do, we're always, the kids are always thought of, so I appreciate that. Um, so they would like to tell you a little bit about what's going on. Hello, my name is Marquette Lewis. I'm in the seventh grade. I go to Romulus Middle School. And my favorite things at the festival was the hayride, the petting zoo, and trick or treating. And thank you, Mayor Burkhoff. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anaya Knight, and I'm in fifth grade, and I go to Wake Elementary. My favorite thing at the fall festival was the hay ride and the trick-or-treating. Thank you, Mr. Burkhoff. <laughs> you. My name is Marquise. I am in third grade at Ramless Elementary School. The things I did at the Ramless Festival are we first went on the hay ride, then we took pictures on the hay. Also, we split up into three groups. I went with Miss Tiffany and that's when we got our snacks and candy. That's it. Then we met up back up with Miss Jill and went back on the bus. Thank you for giving me the oppor an opportunity to attend Boys and Girls Club in the city of Ramulus. Hi, my name is Lanita Kennedy. I am in the sixth grade at the Romulus Middle School. My favorite things I did at the Rom Romulus Fall Festival was to be on the hayride and the petting farm and trick-or-treating. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to attend the Fall Festival. Thank you. My name is Braylon. I am in second grade at Wick School. My favorite things at the city of Romulus Fall Family Festival, the hayride, being with my dad. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> Grab you guys. We have a little gift that we'd like to present. Hi guys, let's move in.
Thanks, Jazz, for the report. Thank you, Boys and Girls Club. It was a great event. I mean, really, for this was uh, you know, third year weather, as Jazz said, wasn't uh, spectacular, but it came together and a good steady crowd throughout and good time had by all. So um, please come out and join us again next year. Um, one just quick shout out. I know Mr. Wadsworth is out, but hopefully, Bill, you're healing up well. He had a procedure, so that's why he's not with us tonight. So I know he'll be back at it as soon as he can. So heal up quick. We'll keep the prayers going and see you soon, Bill. Um, now into my normal action items for my report, if we could. Mr. Chairman, yep. first item up is we have 5A, and what you have is a uh, request um, that came through Lynn Conway, Purchasing Director, Tim Keyes, Economic De Development Director, and OHM, our city engineers, and this is to concur with their administration and award bid ITB 17-18-04 for the E-Course Road and Vining Road construction to the lowest, most responsive and responsible bidder, Dan's Excavating, Inc., and the amount not to exceed uh, $9,231,534.17 and subject to a limitation of $1,271,288.28 of authorized work prior to the sale of the bonds for the project on, about, on or about November 6th of this year uh, with a mutual understanding that in the event that the bonds are not sold, the remaining work on the contract shall be terminated. And that was uh, from funds available through the project on the e-course and Vining Road construction expense account. Mr. Chair, if I may, yes. mm -hmm. I'd like to mo make the motion to concur with the administration and award bid ITB 17-18-04 for the e-course road and Vining Road construction to the lowest, most responsive and responsible bidder, Dan's Excavating, Inc., in an amount not to exceed $9,231,543 dollars, sorry, and 17 cents, and subject to a limitation of $1,271,288.28 of authorized work prior to the sale of the bonds for the project on or about November 6, 2017, with the mutual understanding that in the event that the bonds are not sold, the remaining work on the contract shall be terminated. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Makowski, supported by Ms. Roscoe. This is for ITB 17-18-04, Binding Road, E-Course Road Construction. Any discussion? Here, no discussion. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, City Council. Uh, next is item B, and what you have before you is a recommendation that came from Tim Keyes, Economic Development, and Stephen Hitchcock, our Legal Counsel. Uh, and this is to concur with the administration and authorize the mayor and clerk to approve the attached proposal for professional engineering services with OHM for construction phase engineering services for the E-Course Road reconstruction from Vining Road to Merriman Road and for the construction administration services for Vining Road extension in an amount not to exceed $566,300. And those funds are coming and available and budgeted from the E-Course Vining Road construction project account. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'll make that motion to concur with the administration and authorize the mayor and clerk to approve the attached proposal for professional engineering services with OHM for construction phase engineering services for E-Course e Road construction from Vining to Merriman and for construction administration services for the Vining Road extension in an amount, in an amount not to exceed $566,300. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Abdo, supported by Ms. Makowski, and this is for the OHM proposal, construction phase engineering services, and this is for the Equals Road reconstruction. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Ms. Makowski? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Do you have votes? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you, City Council. Uh, next up is a uh, request item C. Uh, this is a recommendation from Tim Keyes and Stephen Hitchcock, legal counsel. This is a request to concur the administration and authorize the mayor and clerk to approve the attached proposal for professional engineering services of Wade Trim for the Vining Road utility and the road improvement construction phase services associated with the Vining Road project, the amount not to exceed $1,057,000. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Cho. I'd like to make a motion that we concur with the administration and authorize mayor and clerk to 
approve the attached proposal for professional engineering services with way trim for the Vining Road Utility and Road Improvement Construction Phase services associated with the Vining Road Project in the amount not to exceed $1,057,000. Been motion by Ms. Choke, supported by Mr. Kraut for the way trim proposal, Vining Road Utility and Road Improvements in discussion. You know, discussion, Ms. Choke. Yes. Mr. Kraut. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. You have votes yes, motion approved. Thank you, City Council. Uh, next up is a request to authorize payment for the Conference of Western Wayne uh, in the amount of $5,190. This is for our membership dues for the Conference of Western Wayne for the 17-18 uh, fiscal year membership, and those are um, budgeted out of the 17-18 general fund for membership of dues. Mr. Chair, I'll make that yes. motion to authorize payment to the Conference of Western Wayne in the amount of $5,190 for the membership dues for the CWW 2017-2018 physical year membership. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Ms. Mikowski, and this is for to authorize payment to the Conference of Western Wayne in the amount of $5,190. This is for the membership dues for the CWW 2017-18 fiscal year membership. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Mr. Crow. Yes. Ms. Cho. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Do you have votes? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you, Council. Uh, the next item is a budget amendment, and it's a, a request to concur with the administration uh, to cover the cost to replace six uh, rooftop units on the 34th District Court building. Uh, this is a for fiscal year 1718 budget. It included funding to replace one unit, uh, and this is an additional cost for the other five. And it was something that had to be done. It was a really a light safety issue for the current building. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Abdo. I'll make that motion to concur with the administration to cover the cost to replace six rooftop units at the 34th District Court Board. building. In motion by Ms. Abdo, supported by Mr. Kraut. This was to concur with the administration to cover the cost to replace the six rooftop units at the 34th District Court building. Fiscal year 17, 18 budget included funding and replace one unit. This is the additional cost for the other five units. In discussion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Mr. Kraut. Yes. Ms. Choke. Yes. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Ms. Mikowski. Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion approved. Thank you, Council. The last item is just an item of information that had to do with the emergency purchase for the uh, other heat exchanger for the court. Thank that you. concludes my report. Thank you. 6A is the clerk's report. Yes. And first of all, I'd like to announce that uh, tomorrow, October 10th, is the close of res excuse me the close of registration for the November 7th city general election. So if you need you're not registered to vote, um, you have until tomorrow, 4 p.m. to come to the city clerk's office and do so. And under the clerk's report this evening, we have a request, a study session request from Economic Development Director Tim Keys for Monday, October 23rd. 2017 at 6.45 p.m. Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion for a study session request from the Economic Development Director, Tim Keyes, for Monday, October 23rd, 2017 at 6.45 p.m. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Mr. Kraut, for a study session request from Economic Development Director, Tim Keyes, for Monday, October 23rd, 2017 at 6.45. Ms. Roscoe. Yes. Mr. Kraut. Yes. Mikowski. Yes. Ms. Abdo. Yes. Ms. Choke. Yes. Chair votes yes, we will have a study session. 6B is the treasurer's report, and there is no report this evening. So we go on to number seven, uh, public comment. And this is the portion of the council meeting where the audience may address city council. And I'd just like to give a reminder on the back of your agendas there is the rules regarding the public addressing a city meeting whether it's a council meeting or uh, board or commissions in particular number four uh, your remarks shall be limited to three minutes subject to being extended an additional three minutes by consent of the chair there shall be no personal attacks 
Anyone making such remarks or attacks shall lose their right to address the city council. Like I said the uh, complete set of rules can be found on the back of your agendas. Yes, uh, Ms. Uh, Deputy Clerk, uh, with the consent of the city council and a few calls that have been received by council members, uh, the personal tax will no longer be tolerated. Anyone making this re remark, like you said, should lose, lose her or his rights to address the city council board of commission. And this is coming from council and the people that watches the program that the council has been receiving calls about personal tax. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like to address city council, please raise your hand and when acknowledged by the chairperson, approach the podium and state your name. Uh, a response to your comment, if appropriate, will be provided under unfinished business on the agenda. That is, if the information is available at this time. Some items may require further investigation, in which case you will receive a response at a later date. And we have two written requests this evening yes. to speak. The yes. first one is from Sandy Kraut. Sandy Kraut, 9640 Washington Street, Romulus. There's another rumor going around. The Krauts don't care about the schools or millage. We have two children and two granddaughters who have graduated from Ramos High School. Both granddaughters are now in college. Our literature does not refer to school issues anywhere. We're running for city council. He and I both supported Ramos High School Student of the Month for many years, both physically and financially, which can be easily confirmed by Ms. Poyer, assistant principal at the high school. I was on the school board nine years and also supported Van Boosters, Ramos Middle School Student Activity Fund, Mayor's Drug Task Force, purchased football fundraiser cards for myself and gifts, school supplies, hats and gloves, plus my strongest passion, summer school costs for seniors, one or two classes short of, di of a diploma, who passed the class or classes, but because they couldn't pay, didn't receive their diplomas. For me, that was my money well spent. It hurts that someone would try to smear my school board years. Another campaign issue, some have questioned if both a husband and wife can, should run for council. Wayne County does not discriminate. The ballot will have both names and it's the voters' choice to vote for neither, for only one, or for both. I think everyone should vote for the person they feel would best support the residents, whether married, single, etc. Thank you. The next person is Edward Martell. Good evening, Romulus, Mayor, Council. Over the last few weeks, we've heard much discussion about the uh, new Amazon project as well as the Penske project. The uh, Amazon project, uh, to my knowledge, 847,000 square foot project, and the Penske project, a 606,000 square foot project, which translates, of course, into thousands of man hours. So there are many residents, including myself, that uh, would like clarification regarding both of these projects. Uh, first of all, what are the number of Romulus jobs, Romulus men and women currently employed right now during this, on these projects during this period of construction? Uh, secondly, what is the percentage of, of Romulus residents employed uh, on, this job, on this project during this period of construction? Additionally, who is the contractor? Is this a union contractor? And is there a contract for a number of jobs during this period of construction for Romulus men and women or for a percentage of jobs for Romulus men and women during this construction period? And if not, why not? Thank you for your time. Number eight is unfinished business. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is there any comments from the audience? Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. Apologize. That's all right. Okay. Oh, 
Good evening, Mayor, Council, and Barb, filling in for uh, Ellen. I come, this election is really serious, and there's so many things going on. We have a school election with the two proposals, and then we also have the city election. They are two separate elections. And so I, I wanted to clear this up and I wanted to have an audience because people tend to take things and say something different. But I wanted to bring to Ms. Abdo's attention because so many residents as you went to their homes are saying that me and Edward Martell and the Krauts are against the village. If you would talk to Margie and Carol Bell, we have helped more than those that say they're helping. Okay, we visited Inkster, asking them to support the village, the uh, whole harmless, so I just wanted to bring it, this to your attention that the things that you're saying in the community, it's not true. And it's, it's best to stop because you get a seat just based on what, who you are and what you've done, not telling lies on other individuals. Thank you. Yes. Good evening, Charles Miller. I call Bill Wadsworth this evening, Councilman Wadsworth. Uh, he has slight discomfort, but he's doing well. He's healing quickly, and uh, I'll be glad when he comes back so I won't feel guilty picking on him. So, <laughs> Listen, I'm here tonight to talk about something of great importance. Many of us have youngsters who are playing sports. They're playing football. They're playing soccer, they're playing really sports that require a great physicality. I'm here to talk about a situation called sudden death syndrome. Sudden death syndrome is that which is young people on the field as they're exercising and running and running, suddenly their heart compresses and it stops and in many, many instances, they pass away. Now, I went to the school, and I talked to the administrator at the school through a secretary in regards to that which is available to us on the field if one of these situations occur. There was very little information in regards to it. So I'm here this evening hoping that through the mayor's chair and this city council that we could have those individuals responsible for watching our children, my grandchildren, your children and grandchildren as they play these sports to come here and talk to us about what is available on the field. When I read some of the information in regards to it, many of these youngsters pass away because there's nothing on the field including training that would prevent them from passing away, either defibrillators or things of that nature. And so I'm asking that there be, uh, I mean, the, the mayor has done many, many outreach programs. I would, uh, I would ask that he do an outreach program with the school in conjunction with the school and medical professionals that can tell us how we go about protecting our children and how we go about getting the equipment if we don't have the equipment to indeed help them if they do have one of these situations. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Any other comments, uh, ladies? Ms. Webb, seeing you waving back there. I'm Eva Webb, 11049 Moore Street. I just have two comments, good ones. Uh, first of all, the Fall Festival, Jasmine. I was there, it was really nice. It took me back because the hayride, along with the mist of rain, was really, really nice. I enjoyed it tremendously. Um, and I'm not trying to put myself in you all's place, but in regards to Amazon, and in regards to whether they're uh, union employees or how many people will be working on the project, first of all, Dan's <laughs> excavating. I know a lot of those guys very, very well. He's one of the number one excavating uh, contractors in the state of Michigan, uh, only because 
He did a lot of work for Thompson McCulley Company. Also, the contractors are the ones who do the hiring. And nine times out of 10, there will be a con construction trailer on site, usually for large uh, jobs, where a lot of people can just walk in off the street and fill in an application. I don't know how they're gonna handle that, but I do know that with Dan's excavating, he does have union employees from 1191 uh, operating engineers from local 324, and I can just go on and on. But Dan Excavating Company is top notch. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more comments? Yes, please. Hi, my name is Vaughn Martin, Wade Trim and Associates, and I'd just like to extend a thank you for approving our, our proposal. Look forward to working with the city, with Dan's, with OHM, and making this a successful project for providing road construction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the audience? If there's no more other comments from the audience, we're going to close that part out. And now number eight, unfinished business. Unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chairman, I, you know, trying to notate some. What I can do on the um, the questions about Amazon is I can include in your executive summary what information we have on employment and employment requirements. And what I'd offer up to Mr. Martell is a sit down with Tim Keys to go through that information. Uh, and I made a note um, to check into the sudden death syndrome issue to see what has been done or what can be done, and I'll report back to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Chair? Yes, uh, Ms. Abdo. I feel I need to respond to the personal attacks by Ms. Williams. First of all, um, I worked the primary election where your sister and your, hus or your husband were actively campaigning against the millage, and, and, you, and I, that was at Romulus Elementary, and your sister was not even a, a resident of the city. And then I went over to the junior high where you were actively passing out things against the millage. You bring up Mr. Martell, he has never, ever entered my mouth. He has always been supportive of the schools, and I don't know where you're getting this. And you said, though, as I, said, I think if you want to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. That's not true. Then y'all talk. I don't have a sister in Michigan, so you need to stop. You know what you're talking well, about, so please stop. Miss, uh, okay. We gotta have order. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna, you were there, you saw it. Okay, any uh, unfinished business you want to speak? Okay. Okay, number nine is new business. New business, any new business? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, Ms. Abdo. Yes, I was wondering, uh, addressing this to the mayor, if I, when I've been out campaigning, I've had a couple of requests that we start posting our agenda on channel 12, the government channel. Some people don't have access to uh, a computer and so they, it, it used to be there and it's not anymore. We'll, we'll definitely check it out. Okay. I didn't realize it wasn't there. We wanna to try to make sure the agendas are out and transparent so everybody knows what we're acting on, absolutely. So we'll definitely look into it and I'll report back to you, Councilman Abdo. Right, Thank thanks. You. Okay. Okay, number 10 is communication. Any communications? Uh, it's crowd. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. If you're celebrating a birthday in, in October, happy birthday of Annie Moore. I want to say one more thing. Me and my wife always, always supported schools and we always will. Thank you. Any other community? Uh, yeah. Ms. Mikowski? Uh, yeah, could we just, uh, we, we had a lot of people from the audience that are actually running for election, so I'm just wondering if we could all just not talk about the election and just focus on business. Yeah. We're not here to campaign, we're here to do business. Thank you. Thank you. Any more communications? Number 11 is warrant 17-19. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Cho. I'd like to um, uh, uh, adapt a, a resolution to approve warrant 17-19 in the following funds. General fund, $63,880.69. Major Street Fund, $31,175.75. Local Street Fund, $1,963.01. .01. OK, 
cable TV, $88.58. Marin Road Special Assessment, $6,500. Oakwood Sad, uh, $1,955.50. Garbage and Rubbish Collection Fund, $166,000. $903.76. CDBG, $4,339. 911 Service Fund, $3,530.14. Narcotics Enforcement Fund, $40.01. Library Fund, $18,602.45. DDA, $11,577.12. Water and Sewer Fund, $565,050.33. Motor Vehicle Fund, $19,906.73. Technology Services, $15,942.22. Retirees Insurance Benefits, $5,860.09. Revolving Fund, $15,110.24. Current Tax, $43,424.51. Delinquent Personal Property Fund, $38,498.63. Payroll Fund, $4,371.79. For a grand total amount of $1,018,000. Uh, $1,720.55. It's been motioned by Ms. Cho, supported by Ms. Roscoe, uh, to pay warrant number 17-19 for $1,018,720.55. Any questions? Ms. Cho? Yes. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. Warrant number 17-19 will be paid. Number 12 is adjournment. So move to adjourn. Support. It's been motioned by Ms. Roscoe, supported by Mr. Kraut for adjournment. Ms. Roscoe? Yes. Mr. Kraut? Yes. Ms. Mikowski? Yes. Ms. Choke? Yes. Ms. Abdo? Yes. Chair votes yes. We are adjourned. Thank you.